Hey everyone, today I'm going to continue working on my landscape painting. You can see I've gotten the sky, some far away mountains, far away hills, and yesterday I taped off a line for the water. One of my tips to start with for today is to actually exaggerate this line. So I'm going to use masking tape or painter's tape again, and before I rip it off the roll, I'm going to pull, 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 keep it on the roll, but my arms are far apart. I'm actually going to tape the water today, do the reverse. So I'm taping that line where the water meets the faraway hills. I'm going to exaggerate that first. So I'm going to press it on and now I'm going to rip it off the roll and just give it a little extra press on my canvas. And now I'm going to use my different brushes. So I'm going to be doing some hills that look like bushy trees from far away. So I'm going to use an old kind of bushy brush and I'm going to get some dark shadows in there. So I have a palette with some colors on it. I thought about what colors I wanted first, so I didn't waste them. And now I'm gonna mix up some dark greens. And instead of painting back and forth like I did for the water, I'm gonna jump up and down on the canvas with my brush to create some dark shadowy places at the bottom of my trees there. And we'll see what this looks like when I pull off my tape. So if you need a little bit more contrast or exaggeration, this is a really cool trick to try. I'll put some in here, and I'm going right over top of the tape. Jumping up and down, giving it some kind of texture. And then I'm also trying to put in all different greens here. So light greens, medium greens, dark greens, to imitate the way the sun and the light hits different things outside. I'm even getting some white and yellow on there. And I'm just dipping right in, jumping right on top, and mixing on the canvas. I'm not afraid to go and get some more. So I have a real variety of greens in there. And it also creates a sense of depth because I have my close hills, my far hills, and things that are closer tend to get a little bit more, have a little bit more contrast. And you can see more details. Let's do a little bit in here. And then I want to peel the tape off and see what it looks like. I'm really excited. Put my palette and my brush down. Let's see what we got. I'm going to peel the tape off. Oh, there we go. That was the contrast I was looking for. Then I just get rid of this tape. And today, I also wanted to show you how you can create some hills that are closer. Or another thing that you could do is also make this body of water much smaller. So it can become more of a pond or even maybe a river. So I'm going to do basically the same thing that I've been doing. I'm using my bushy brush. I might even switch to a bigger bushy brush and I'm going to get a variety of greens. And let's see, I think I'll start here. The only scary part is we have to go over top of the water. Oh man. So I'm going to start with some dark greens today, I think. Your choice, what you want to start with. And I'm going to jump up and down and I think I'm going to make an island in here of my greens. Whoa. Creating those dark green first, but I'm going to go back over top and I can bring it down, tilt this corner here, and maybe I'll do the same thing over here. I'll get my greens, my dark greens, and I might even overlap. If you're feeling really brave, I'm going to overlap part of the background, really bring it in. And the more uneven it is, the better, the more realistic it'll look. And if I stop there, it kind of looks like there's two little hills here, and you can see a giant lake behind it. If you wanted to keep going, you could absolutely do that. But here's the scary part. I gotta cover up that water here. Ah, it's hard to cover things up in a painting, but it's also really great because if there's something you don't like that you painted, you can cover those things up. So you could stop there if you wanted. Or if you're feeling really brave, you could really keep going. And I'm gonna create a lot more contrast and exaggeration in the front. I'm not doing any big trees or details yet. We'll get to that in the next one. But for now, I'm just kind of planting the grass, growing the ground where my things will go. All right, so I have a dark base of green. Now I'm going to do some lighter greens over top. I'm not gonna completely cover my darkness now, but I wanna do some light greens on top. So I'm actually using a greenish yellow. And in some spots, I'm gonna go back and layer. So you have the light spots, the dark spots, some areas it mixes more, so you might like that, or you might want to go back and get some more yellows. You can even add white. I've seen people with pinks and reds. 
totally up to you, but you do want a lot of different values of your greens in there. And if this is mixing in too much, that's okay. I can go back tomorrow or later in the day when it's drier and I can add even more layers and they'll stand out even more once they dry a little bit. And if you feel like it gets too light, well, go back in with some of your dark shadowy colors. You can make some of those areas darker again. This is your world, as Bob Ross says. And I think I'll stop there for now. A little light. And that's how I create some closer hills and make my water a little bit smaller. Don't be afraid to overlap your water. Don't even be afraid to overlap some of those background hills when you do it. You can stop, just do one side, you can do both sides, you can fill in the middle as much as you want. This is up to you. Some people even leave this completely blank and you don't have any ground there. Totally up to you. Happy painting, everybody. Enjoy.